to thank Roblox for having us here again, and to uh, thank Carl and Tom for their, their early presentation. And now, to introduce the second half of our, of our evening today, we have with us Scott Davidoff and Ian Lee, who are going to talk about a software project called Mood Jam. So I'll let these guys take it away and introduce themselves. Thanks very much, and uh, take it away. Don't forget to talk into the mic. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Scott, and this is my colleague and friend, Ian Lee. And uh, we're going to talk about a project that we've been working on uh, called Mood Jam. Uh, we're actually very excited to talk about it. This is the first time we've really showed it publicly, or talked about it publicly, even though it's been public for some time. Um, I guess let's start with what we were interested in. Um, I guess we sort of became curious about the concept of what would happen if you tried to allow computers to allow you to more easily express moods. Um, it seems like when you just sort of think about this beautiful device here, it doesn't necessarily lend itself to emotional expression. And we were wondering, how, you know, how could you make it so that people can express themselves, especially their emotions in certain ways, and then what benefit might you get from doing that? So, at first, we sort of just became interested in, well, what happened with small groups? So, like, what would happen if I could share my emotions with my family? You know, I had a really crap day today, um, and, or I had a really exciting day, and maybe my family might be more aware of that. Or, individually, what would happen if I might be able to journal my moods and get a larger record of these things? So as we started to play with these concepts, I think we started to realize that there are a couple of interesting questions. Um, so first, what would happen if you tried to allow people to share their moods with one another? And what would that, basically, how would that happen? Um, what, what happens when you do? In other words, would there really be any effect of being able to share these, uh, you know, your general emotional state with a group of people? And then lastly, like, it sort of starts to lend itself to this question of visualization. What do moods look like if I actually tried to keep a record or a log and said, you know, this month my moods were like this? I mean, it's, these were interesting questions. So anyway, we're going to present one answer to you today, at least something that we've been working on and something that we call Mood Jam. Um, so I guess, do you want to start Ian by talking about what the different dimensions are and how we started to work out. Sure. Okay, so the project started about a year ago and we were actually considering many different things of how we visualize the information and how, well not just visualization but also how do you input the, your emotions to the computer. And so for input ideas, it was basically get off the wall ideas. Well, but what if you use a sensing chair that would sense your emotion? Or what if you had a missing potato head, which you know you set the, the what if you're happy, you put a happy face on it. If it's sad, you put a sad face on it. And then we also had this idea of okay, well, what if you put it on a wall with the, these different faces, and then if you're happy, you throw like a ball towards the poster that has happy on it. Or if you're sad, you throw it towards the sad face. And we actually implemented this, um, another simple one where, what if you can just free, uh, freeform text, or just, just say whatever it is that you, you feel like. You know, for example, if you're happy, or it doesn't even have to be, you, know, but, um, you can even say you're happy. Just these random adjectives that you would describe your, your current mood. And another thing we also tried was, well, what if you can just manipulate pictures? For example, there, there's this poster of um, Calvin and Hobbes, well, Calvin, Calvin having all these different emotions. So what if you can just select one of those and then say, okay, this is my mood. Okay. And so those were just some of the input ideas that we were. And then, so from the input side, we had that. And now we, we also had ideas for output. And so I mentioned, you know, what if you just have Calvin and Haas pictures that people will see? 
you know, when people can just see text and things that, that you've inputted in. And we also had ideas that the jelly bean is better. So maybe like different colors would correspond to a particular mood, or sweet would correspond to you know happiness, and sour ones would correspond to like you know a crappy day. And we also had ideas about um, what, what, what can you do with smell, what can you do with music, what can you do with you know, this, an electric fan, right? But maybe I'll show you this later, but uh, Scott also created a, like a, a sample application with like, representing people as ants in this ant form and just interacting with each other. So but I guess the point here was, okay, we had these diff all these different ideas of how we can put input in information, input in emotions into a computer, and how you would help with it. And then eventually after like talking for months about what we would do, it was like, okay, well, why don't we just get something simple and, um, and quick out there that we can play around with. And the result of that is this new jam. And the new Jam website right now. And so the approach that we had here was, well, why don't, we're not going to restrict people with the kind of emotions they can input in to the, into the, into the computer. And also we're not gonna, we're gonna, so the emotions here that they're inputting is basically free form. And the colors that they're selecting is just free association of what colors they associate with those moves. So we don't say red is angry. But if, he's, if you're angry, what colors do you associate with that anger? And also, we chose a, a, a website to be a form of output because then it's, it makes it easier to, to share your information. And also, we use colors as kind of what to entire. Well, it makes it just it makes it pretty. And so, so now we're, we're going to go over to the demo of how Moon Jam works. And so I'm going to log into my account. Okay, so this is the front page of MooJam. And this is showing the most recent upload um, posts of everyone. Well, not everyone, the first 10. The last 10 people who posted information on the site. And there are no names on there because of privacy concerns. But everything is, everything is public. Your, your information is public, it's just that you have to give, you have to give someone your URL for, for them to see it. So, yeah, you can also register. Just go to mooncheck.org. But I'm already registered, so I'm just going to log in. Okay, so when, when I log in, these are all, well, see, you see the last time I posted was February 11th, so it's probably got busy and uh, <laughs> not, didn't post it anymore. But, but I used it for a while since I used it from October to February 11th. Anyway, so I'm just going to post. So right now, I'm going to post. I'm nervous. Okay. okay, so this is what you see when you post your, your information. So, what colors would I associate with nervousness? So maybe I would associate right now with well, this particular room, right? And uh, so, I'm just going to free associate with colors I associate with that nervousness. Although I'm not sure if this is the right color. The color is kind of off. Do you use two colors to describe your mood? No, not done yet. Okay. <laughs> I think one of the interesting things that will show as we look at the library of emotions that we've been able to capture is there's a lot of complexity in what people ultimately use to represent any one particular mood, and a lot more than we originally had imagined. Well, I'm posting my mood right now. I'm just, I just move the picture so that way I get the right colors. The picture on the, the colors on the projector is not, is not correct. So. Okay, 
So I'll select the colors. Okay. And then I have all these tags that I've inputted in before. So if you haven't inputted anything yet, this is completely fine. So since I've been putting in things in before, it shows up on the, on the screen. So I can just either select from here or um, type it in. But I'm just going to select. And then I can add a note. associating with a particular mood, we then have the ability to look back across these thousands of entries and really look at both what people have said in terms of their color and also the text that they've started to use to represent. And if you, uh, if you mouse over, you can see what people actually wrote in, in the text areas. And it starts to become totally fascinating and people are using it as something like an instant messenger tool and they'll keep it open and constantly update the, their state of mind. So, right, I'm presenting in front of people here. This is Ian's message. Uh, last night's banana and relaxed post uh, I mean, What do people say? Banana. Banana. <laughs> I mean, it's completely hysterical, but people, I mean, this is really complicated. <laughs> so on this page, you don't really know who the people are, but one of the longer term visions that we have is to create groups where you might be able to follow what people are inputting. And so I think one of the things that I'll show you is we, when you first imagine the sort of psychological models of mood, they create these eight dimensional grids often and say moods are affective, positive, or something like that. But when we basically said type how you feel, Banana, I don't think, is on the psychologist's list. But people seem to enjoy it. I don't know what that well, 
wrong if there are psychologists here, because I know. But I don't think it's on there. And people use this as a way to express, well, first of all, what we, what we expected in terms of mood became much wider and much more plastic. Um, so we'll show you a couple of examples. So this, this is uh, an explorer that Ian put together that shows the most popular uh, entries by text label. And so you can see the, the, the thing that people have entered most in the database right now is tired at one, at almost a thousand. So almost a fifteenth of the things people have said they are is are tired. Um, and so one of the things that you start to notice when you look across these color, uh, across the, the expression of tired, for example, well, first, the first thing that strikes me as interesting is that there's no absence. If you would say tired is definitely not red or yellow, you, our data doesn't support that. In fact, it shows that people have used just about every color to represent uh, the any this mood tired. The, uh, just to explain the visualization a little bit. The uh, Portion of width is representative of the number of instances that the color has appeared as a representative of that particular emotion uh, with the floor of a pixel for, for as long as it's been mentioned in kind of like pixel representation. And so when you start to look at certain colors, what you can, uh, another trend that we start to realize is that some colors, uh, some moods actually do have a proportional representation that's more in line with some of the things that and so, um, we have, okay, so the, this, if you guys have any, good, I'll give you some examples of some that we found that were kind of interesting. <laughs> Stone is a little green. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, people put that as a move. But also, uh, this is connected to the database lab, so if you guys have any moods you'd like us to explore, just shout them out. I'm nervous since uh, Ian put that one in. Okay. Good one. Yeah. 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 So we can see that first of all, it doesn't, uh, people type in with a lot more than just simply nervous, right? There's nervous within various patterns. But even nervous, it looks like it tends to be a little bit more yellow than other uh, emotions. Okay, how about sexy? Is that how you're feeling, Bill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 it doesn't look like it's very well represented. My <laughs> more users. <laughs> yes, don't forget. <laughs> Maybe that. Some other ones that you might expect is if you would expect, oh, well, sad might be blue. I mean, I think our data would agree with that. It, it tends to look like it's blue is a much larger proportion of the same. I, I don't know. Than 
the larger representation of happy the whole, of the whole population, which actually has a much wider distribution. Um, also, you can see certain things like tired, um, so you can have a, a larger representation of gray or something like that. Um, I think another thing that we found that was interesting was in the, the uh, so the, any individual expression of mood can have, you know, large numbers of colors, but people put really interesting things on It's sort of fun to lurk. Um, so sometimes you'll just see these sort of solid plan. That must be the banana guy. <laughs> um, yes. There, there are three three thousand registered users right now. They were were you aware of looking at users as a series of small multiples that, for example, see what the characters and color palettes are of different users? So that's that's a good idea. Why don't you do that? <laughs> so because I think there's people are pretty idiosyncratic, right? And so people associate different colors with different moods. And so I think there you'll see these differences between people. And we haven't done that yet. But if you if you look at the the aggregate, it gets washed out because people put in different different things. And now your idea of small multiples would be really interesting because the things that I associate with happiness, with good emotions versus bad emotions, are very different from another person. Oh, we should show. Oh, we should show options. Okay. Like yes. That's a good idea. Yes. So when you look at, at these in particular versus. I'm going, to sh I'm going to, we're going to show you another one of our collaborators who's been putting in a lot of information to Mujam and just how she how she expresses her emotions is very different from how I express my emotions. So she tends to compared to my when I when I can put in my emotions, I tend to put in maybe two or three to four or five colors where she would put in tens to thirties and three gradients. And so I think she has and she would also put in the the way she would describe her emotions is with, with words that is like you know, a list of like ten. Usually it would put in two or three, but she would put in several. Diary. Yeah, I mean, I think in many ways this has, we, we don't have any evidence for this yet, but what we're hoping to find is that the act of expressing allows people to uh, feel better, or at least feel more connected with how they felt. Over the it's a mobile phone client, so I can post from wherever I'm at, but I have to post from my desktop. Yeah. No, we don't, but see, we, we don't have that many programmers, so... We're looking for no, we don't. Well, because <laughs> this is a side project in addition to the projects that we're working on as PhD students, and so collaborators, you know, it's good. Yeah. Um, so, just one other thing to show on the. Uh, so, when you look at the. Sometimes people express moods as these individual tiles. And often you'll, you'll see the, like here's a good example of one, where the, actually the juxtaposition of various tiles is, becomes part of the expression. And so you, you, you wouldn't look at any of the data as independent, or uh, as you look at one tile compared to another tile compared to another tile, you see an evolution. And I think that as a time series, it's also interesting. <laughs> Um, here's another example of a view that we have according to the aggregate sort of zeitgeist of the day. This is uh, the most popular posts right now, so happy is the most popular post for, for today. And this is, I guess, as close as we have right now to a set of small multiples, where you see these are the representations of happy, as we, and we've kept them as distinct individual as opposed to aggregating them into a larger whole. And you see that um, you know, one of the versions of happy is actually just entirely green. Maybe that was one of the stone guys. 
but um, some of them are also really different, right? Here's just three, here's two, um, and then just in general, the most recent posts. <laughs> Looks like we've got a lot of banana activity right now. This is a guy that posts his maybe 10 times a day, and he likes banana. <laughs> I won't give you his name, but he's there. Yeah, so I get this. Have you considered uh, sort of matching this data with seasons or the weather? Because I wonder if, like, figure out, you know, like, seasonal impressive disorders. Or time of day. Or time of day. We haven't been keeping data long enough, I think, to have yeah. made the, the historical look across the seasons, but I think that would be really interesting. Um, and particularly if we, through IP address, could I identify places that get less light or, or things like that. But I think that'd be interesting. Do you think some of these trends that you're seeing are kind of symptomatic of social conditioning, like blue, sadness, yellow, cowardice, uh, red passions? So it, your question is, like, it, it, like do you think why are moods associated with certain colors? So that we can open it up, and so to so that other people can create their own visualizations. And we've already mentioned this this idea of you know creating groups. So maybe you have a group of friends, and then aggregate all the the moves that you have for that particular group, and sharing on IM, and and share, sharing your your moves in, in a MySpace page. Right now, we actually have a Google gadget. That you can um, use so that you can put it on your own website. And so that's already implemented. And eventually, once you know we have more time to actually do some more extensive analysis, and you guys are pointing out a lot of good questions that right now we have an answer, we don't have an answer to, but hopefully we'll be able to answer those. So anyway, I guess we'll end there. Okay. Question? Good question. Are you considering using any other variables besides color and text? Like any sort of variations in typeface or other graphic images? Or yeah, well, initially we did, right? And we were like, okay, well, why don't we just get something easy to put up? But I think it would be nice to kind of to also allow those other variables so that you can associate, so you can associate them. So, for example, what if we allow them to put in pictures so that you can see you can, you can kind of correlate, okay, these are the pictures that they, they, they associate with these colors and also with these emotions. 
and there's also some idea, some people have, some some people have suggested maybe what if you um, allow us to put in where, where where we were when we put it in, and so then you can see these associations of okay, well, when I'm at home, I feel this way. When I'm in the office, I feel this way. And so I think putting in variables would be a good. Other variables. Would what colors are most often used for each emotion word, but you can also do it the other way, what emotion words are most often used for each color. So, you know, what what words are often are most often used when when they select red or blue or whatever. And it might be interesting to see how that groups different emotion words. I'm just I'm just writing the examples. <laughs> Great. Thanks, you guys. Thanks very much.